Miss Duncan? Yes, Miriam. The doctor will see you in a moment. Thank you. Well, this is a month old take, but that makes new ones. Might as well get it over with now. Certainly. I'll examine Miss Duncan right away. Can you go to the nurse, please? Breathe deeply. Can you please? More deeply. Oh, I feel dizzy. That's the altitude. You see, I wasn't disappointed after all. Let me just take my x-ray. When did you first notice that you were ill? I really don't remember. It just kept getting worse. Professor Lennox sent me a very nice letter. He warned me to take the best care of him. That's very kind. That's very kind of Professor Lennox. Open it up. Take a deep breath. Again. Hold it. That's all. May I address? You may. When will I know the results? Tomorrow. How long will I be here, Doctor? You've been doing concert tours for the past two years. Night here, night there, eating on the run, rushing to catch trains, barely time to sleep. Barely time for anything. You should be very tired. Yes. Yes, I am. Are you finished with me, Doctor? For the time being. You know, I'm really quite overwhelmed to meet you. I've got a large number of your records, also a very vivid memory the last time I heard you broadcast. Play is all right, Doctor. Good. I won't put you under orders on your first day here, but I do recommend that you lie down for a while. Your suite is number... 17. I've helped this writer. Seventeen it is. We should have to build you up at the the appetite. With some change there. By the way, I think on your first night here, you ought to dine with your doctor. Shall we meet in the lobby at seven? Thank you. Notify the kitchen, grade A, stimulation diet number 17. Yes, doctor. Thank you. 
There were no clothes. I watched all through dinner. I didn't see anyone who looked like the white walker type. I'll be back in a minute. Yes, he said I could. Hello? Doctor, this is Karen Duncan. Can you come up to my room quickly, please? Mysterious knock. And I'm 
so hungry. That's wonderful. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. You finally get to see it? Yes, thank you. Good. And where's my brass ring? Oh, I missed it. I didn't mean to go far enough. You won't be leaving that for a while. Oh, no, you can't. Yes. But yesterday I... Yesterday you smoked today or not. Remember, you're under orders. Did you better tell you about your schedule? Yes. That's walking up to the first gong. You better. Rest your ears, Miss Duncan. Didn't you eat your breakfast? I lost my appetite. Sorry it's always hard the first two or three days. In a week you wouldn't change it for anything. Do you want a book? I see you brought some. No. I'll just sit here and think. Think about what? About what's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Except if you get well. How do you know? You'll get well. That is, if you do as the doctor says. Some of these people just make trouble for themselves. There. Now, you're all set for the morning. I'll be back later. Don't pay any attention to her. We don't take ourselves too seriously here. Not seriously at all. I'm Celestine Miller. I know who you are. I watched you at dinner last night. Yes, I know. I heard you last night, too. Heard me? When Tony came in. Tony? Oh, oh you mean Dr. Stanton. Yes, Dr. Stanton. Don't you call him Tony yet? No, not yet. You're really quite ill, aren't you? So they say. I'm not. I'm just playing sick. My husband thinks he's in love with another woman, and my being here makes him feel guilty. Would you like a cigarette? No, oh, thank you. Tony has indoctrinated you, hasn't he? Yes, I suppose. What do you think of him? I think he's charming. First date, he's always charming. Mrs. Miller. I'll see you after the gong. Not, though. 
The only thing they have in common is that they are all you. Peace out, you anyway. Not a very flattering one. How am I getting along? I'll tell you tomorrow. Well, you say that every time you examine me. Don't you ever think about today? Of course, all the time. Well, what do you think of me today? I think you're a lovely and talented young woman who still has some distance to go. Well, that's a confession. What? That you think I'm a lovely, talented woman. I think you're a lovely young woman who's taking up more of my time than she should. Don't you realize I have a lot of other patients out there? Certainly. Other than the back impression? Not of this. Fortunately, impresses me. Why don't you go? Oh, tell me, don't throw me out. I feel so good, so, so at one with everything. You can feel so at one with everything somewhere else. Then the fact impression? Of course, it's the gift of the mountains. High metabolism. No, I prefer a musical term, harmony. Strange how the days here melt together. Like a perfect chord. That's the charm of living without a calendar and living quietly. You can't say I'm not living quietly. See, so you just stay that way. Yes, sir. Are you all right? Now I am. It was my fault entirely. I didn't realize I was coming into the intersection. Neither did I. Mr. Claremont! How does it look, Pete? Not so good. You don't know how sorry I am. Oh, it's nothing that can't be fixed. Are you all right? Well, I guess so. I was terribly frightened. So was I. I'll go into town and have him sent out a tow car. That is if I can get a ride. Yes, of course you can. Do you want me to stay here, Mr. Claremont? See, the money quick. <laughs> By the way, my name is Claremont. Paul Claremont. Is he ready? No, thank you. Not just me. The air has a bike up here. Yes, there's a new snow on the mountains. I should have walked my skis. Where did you come from? Monte Carlo. I came out for the race. The race? Next Sunday, haven't you? No, I haven't. How are things in Monte Carlo? Where they always are. The wheels spin. Born broker retires young. And Mr. Claremont always loses. Why don't you come down and bring me some luck? I can have you there in 95 minutes. With a broken leg? 
No, thank you. I like it too much up here. So do I. I've never run into such interesting danger before. Well, the menace is practically over. I'll have you in the village in a few minutes. You should advise so fast. Are you warning me not to speed? I am. I want this to last as long as possible. After all, speed isn't necessarily moving. It can be a kind of philosophy, too. A pattern for living. Mm. Pattern for winning races. Do you want me to drive you at the garage? With it, I'll go into the social.
I was no longer different, no longer sick. I was as I had been. <laughs> a man tried to pick me up today. A very attractive man. I can hardly blame him for that. Oh, it was so good for my morale. To have a man show an interest in one, it was... It was so normal. <laughs> After the full impact had struck me, I, I knew I was well again. You will be, but you must go slowly. I'm beginning to hate that word, the most hateful word in the world. I'm going to have to ask you not to go to the village for a while. Why not? Because I think it's best. That's not the reason. I don't be too much of a woman. You know it's not. Let's not argue about it. How can you always be so professional? Why must you deny any joy that I have? I go to the village, someone talks to me, I come back here singing inside, and you put on a long face and say, stay here and take my pulse and act like a pompous... or leave my hand alone. Too much excitement for one day. No, Dr. Stanton isn't here today. I just finished cleaning. He went down to the village and he won't be back until tonight. Oh. Anything I can do for you, miss? No, thank you.
No, I didn't see the race. I just got there. You lost. You know, it's your fault, Ralph. What do you mean? His car broke down less than a mile from the finish line. His car can. Was he hurt? Oh, no, there was no accident. He just had to fall out of the race, that's all. Well, that's better. Come on, let's go in here. You know, Karen, I like you. And I've got something for you. I'm going to make you my heir. Do you feel all right? I feel wonderful. I'm delirious. Wouldn't you be if you were going home? Yes, I guess you're right. I know how you feel. This is for you. Comes in very handy. What is it for? It's a passkey to the sanitarium. I got it from the night watchman. It cost a lot, but it was worth it. Anytime you come in after hours, you just use the servant's entry. Well, that's sweet of you, but I don't think I'll be out after hours. Keep it. And promise me, no matter how late you come in, you will knock on my door. I'm going back in another while. I've got the pack. Three big trunks. Besides, I want to know how everything came out. Yes, man. You better hurry. Goodbye, darling. Have yourself a time. Sure thing. Leave enough money, you know, the management leaves there for people to trip over. Aren't you being a bit previous breaking an engagement? Well, he'll be there tomorrow, too. He? Yes, the crew came. <laughs> you mean you're giving him up for me? That's the ultimate sacrifice. See how serious it is? I'm even neglecting my vices. Besides, the crew has become routine. I'd like to keep away from routine. Would you like dinner? What about the management's lunch? That's the management's problem. George, you see Miss Duncan? No, sir. Not just this afternoon.
Doug, you shouldn't be here. Okay, where is she? Mrs. Miller has left. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. What did you have to do? Turn out to the pillow? Yes. Yes, I had to turn it out to the pillow. Are you ready now? I'd like a drink first. What would it be? I'm having brandy. I'd like the same. A brandy, please. May I have a cigarette? Oh, hello. 
see it being for me. And out in the sea, the mountain seems so far away. I want them to seem that way. So do I. I want every place except where we are to be unbelievably distant. I want the mountains to be on the moon and the sea to be on the sun. I want everything except this place, this moment, to vanish in the mist. Nothing else exists. to give me medical advice, Dr. Stanton, you're wasting your time. I have no need of physicians now. I'm my own doctor. I make my own diagnosis. It's very simple. I'm feverish. I have morning temperatures and evening chills. I'm losing weight, but I don't care. Why must it be like this? Because I want it. I'm trying to smash the face of the park, and I will. One of these days... He wanted to go back to the mountains, to be a patient filled with pity and false hopes for tomorrow. Lying there was like lying in a deep pit. Here I feel as though I was on the highest mountain top in the world, with nothing between the sun and me but air. Life down here is lived on the mountain top. But you wouldn't understand that. 
I won't go back. I haven't asked you to. You will if I give you the chance. When I left, I made a deal with myself. I made it even if I had to pay with days of time for every second of happiness. Are you happy? Happier than I've ever been before. I don't believe you. I didn't ask you to come here. I want you to leave me alone. Go away, please. I want a bottle of champagne. Gentlemen, it's one of the second watches, Sean. Gordon Rue. Gentlemen, how many glasses? One. One? One. Three. Gentlemen. We've been looking for you everywhere, darling. Don't tell me you're drinking alone. Looks that way. Why? Because I want to drink alone. What a silly idea. I'm beginning to know the background from that affair. Richard's in there losing my shirt. Did you see the mission? Dr. Stanton? Yes? Do you want to see me about Miss Duncan? The only typical man to reach. I prefer to be. What about Miss Duncan? Have you known her long? You met her while you were racing up in the mountains, am I right? What if you are? Did she tell you what you were doing up there? I didn't ask her, that was her business. And I'm not so sure it's yours, but it is. I don't know what you're up to, and I'm sure I don't like it. I'm sorry, I think you'll like it even less after I finish. Do you mind coming to the point, whatever it is, all right? If she hasn't seen fit to tell you what's the matter, I can see that it's up to me to do so. She's very ill. I don't believe you. She's a picture of half, one of the tricks of her illness. She's an undischarged patient in the Morvier Sanitarium. But how would you know? I was her doctor at the sanitarium. Yes. She never said a word. Why didn't she tell me? I don't know. I can think of several reasons. Well, she was up there, she suffered a severe shock, and I think it was that more than anything else that drove her down here. She's trying to turn her back from the past. You've gone through a lot of trouble to tell me this. I'd like to get one thing clear. As far as Karen is concerned, am I talking to the doctor or the past? To the doctor. Why didn't you leave the choice up to her? I did tonight. Have you seen her? You've asked her to go back to the mountains? Yes. And she refused to go? Yes. So you're my last court of appeal, Claire. The choice is up to you. A very small choice, this. Why well, not ask you to force her back to more the Take it to any mountains. Take it to the desert, Egypt, Arizona, anywhere where the climate would help her. If you don't, you kill her. Kill her. Up until this evening, she was committing suicide. But now that you know, if you don't stop her, in a way, you'll be committing murder. So, now if you'll excuse me, Doctor. That was wonderful. I thought you hated exercise. Dancing with you was an exercise? Oh.
I've got something to show you. What do you mean? It's yours. What do you mean it's mine? Don't you like it? Oh, I forgot to tell you. The Atlantis is leaving early in the morning. We're going to be on it. No, Paul, I can't. I'm having your luggage sent up from the hotel tonight. We're going to Egypt. Egypt? I've taken a six-month lease on a pyramid, and I've hired the Sphinx for a watchdog to keep an eye on you. Do you think I'll need a watchdog that large? I think the climber would be good for you, too. The climber? I saw Dr. Stanton. He told me to take you to Egypt. It's true, isn't it? Karen, last night, and they told me I was bitter. I hated you. And then when I saw you in the bar throwing yourself away, I suddenly was full of pity. I feel differently now. I want to take care of you, to be with you always. Now I know I'm in love with you. That puts things in natural life for both of us. Remember once I told you I was afraid you'd disappear? I don't want that to happen. Go to sleep now, darling. Tomorrow morning, we'll be well out to sea. And we're out of sight of land, and we'll be out of sight of the past, too. Some things I want to discuss with Richard. I'll look in on you later. Missed you at the casino, madame. Madame seems to be in distress. Perhaps a, a little too much wine. Could I, could I be of any help? A taxi. Please get me a taxi. Why, certainly, madame. I, I shall be very happy to help you find a taxi. I, uh, I think there's one just around the corner. Very well, madame. Where do you wish to go? To London. 
Isn't she? Yes, she's here. I want to see her. I don't think you should. Why not? She's very ill. I don't believe you. You know her condition. She was in a bad way when she came here last night. I don't like your type of humor, Stanton. As a matter of fact, I don't like yours. The last time I saw Karen, she was in very good spirits. When was that? Last night. We were aboard a yacht. I left her in the stateroom. When I came back to look in on her, she was gone. And now I want to see her. I want to find out what happened from her, not from you. You have every right in the world to see her. Very long time. It is away from you. 
start away with sleep. Oh, and the lights are beginning to go on in the village. How warm they look. Is that matter with you? No. Oh, the world seems so safe now. The, the lights and the snow in the little house. Tony, the first day you brought me here, this, this is the only house I've lived in since. Many years ago. I think it's always been waiting for you. When I'm well again, we can... We can do such wonderful things in this house. What would you like to do first? First? Oh, first I... I think I'd like to be able to meet you at the door. You will, my darling, very soon. And then, as I begin to get better, we, we can start taking walks. Short ones at first and then longer and longer. And perhaps... Perhaps someday we can... We can walk right to the top of Mount Verge. Darling, you don't just stroll at all, huh? Oh, we will. You said I'd never get to Thank you. 